Theory without practice is empty, and practice without theory is blind. This is a quote from Immanuel Kant. In this podcast, I want to talk about real analysis and measure theory and its relevance to economics and economic research. So what we know is that these are theoretical tools which are used for understanding the properties of real numbers, functions, and well-defined probabilities. Most people in this field, however, get away without knowledge of these tools, whether they're in industry or even in most academic research. So why is it important to know this material? The short answer is because the main goal of an academic is to generate theory or to provide empirical evidence that embodies a theory or says contrary to it. Since economists in general are in the business of creating mathematical theories, which I have emphasized in the past are important for making sharp claims about data generating processes, it follows that we require tools that are based on the fundamentals of mathematics. As an academic, it's not enough to just have empirical data, since for every set of economic data, there could be hundreds of counterexamples, funny-looking regressions, uh, articles, which can inform policy in an exactly different direction. In this case, we end up having a data arms race of sorts, which we see a lot, and that ends up causing a lot more noise than productive discussion at times. In addition, there is information which we cannot necessarily extract from data, which will have to go and resort to analysis strictly from the structure of our problem. What real analysis and measure theory does is that it provides rigid support to ideas and guides new theory to a proper structure. Empirical evidence is important, but if we are to generate a theory from it, which is used as a way to guide actions of policymakers and even regular people, we have to go and have a solid foundation in mathematics. So some people may be listening to this and think that this is completely utopian thinking. This is giving a much more of a honorable role to the academic economist than some people may think. So I want to point out that it's not only the role of an academic economist to go and generate research or to generate ideas and just you know put them out there and publish books that no one will read it's to go and regulate ideas in the field because ideas need to be taken seriously as they could go and influence how people go and act and how people could go and behave and you need a lot of smart people to be going and looking at this research This is why we have this process of peer review, because we want to say that there are good ideas and bad ideas. And if you have a solid foundation in your results mathematically, people can't just go and say, I don't like your work. They have to go and contend with, hey, this is what the math is saying. So with that in mind, I think it's important even for people that are walking out at the master's level to be exposed to this sort of rigor because most people in this field end up in a decision making environment. Whether they'll be doing report writing, data preparation, or even direct advisory. Data is important, but following the same strategy for every single scenario won't work in spite of having good data on stuff. These are just my thoughts on the use of these theoretical mathematical tools in economics and why it's important to be exposed to them. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Take care.